Hi there, it's Mark Sebastian, founder of OptionPit.com, and this is the FAQ. Um, it is uh, good to see everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, we had a really nice response from uh, last week on, uh, you know, what is volatility? Um, a lot of people are asking about it, and uh, if you didn't get a chance to see it, please go to our YouTube page and, and check it out. Like and subscribe. Uh, set on notifications and uh, leave a comment. That's the best way for me to know uh, what questions you have. So out of my question, what is implied volatility? Uh, the question I got after that is, what changes volatility? Why does volatility change? Um, I talked about volatility as it relates to an over-under number, right? The uh, NFL games have an over-under number and people bet on whether the over uh, uh, a game will have more points or less points than the over-under. Implied volatility is a stock's over-under for how much it will move. Really simple, really easy. So now here are the NFL, the Vegas NFL lines for week nine. And we can look at, you know, I'm a Bears fan, so let's look at the Bears uh, at Philadelphia. And the over-under for the game is 42 and a half which means they are betting that uh, I can bet that the combined score of the Bears and Philadelphia will be more than 42 and a half or less than 42 and a half. So I would win if the, if, uh, the Bears scored 21 and Philadelphia scores 20. Uh, I lose if the Bears score 25 and, Vill and Philadelphia scores 20. And that's just like implied volatility. So what makes that number move in Vegas? The answer is betting, betting. So I think that the Bears are going to beat Philadelphia 28 to 14. No, uh, 20, uh, yeah, 28 to 21. That's 49 points. So I think that the Bears are going to beat Philadelphia by seven points and the total score will be 49 points. And so how would I want to bet? I would want to buy the over under. I'd want to buy the over. So I would buy 42 and a half points. Well, let's say that uh, Leisha who works for me is in the room and she says, boy, you know what? I think the bears are going to win 35 to 20 and she bets the over. And then all of you listening to me talk, start betting the over. Well, at a certain point, Caesar's book is going to look at how much exposure they have to the under. So let's say there's $50 million worth of betting on the over and only $10 million of betting on the under. Well, Caesar's has $40 million of risk there, right? If the over happens, they lose $40 million. So how do they solve for this? How do they solve for this? It's not that hard. I'll show you. The way they solve is they change this over under. They raise the over under to, to from 42 and a half to maybe 40, Four. And if people keep betting it, they raise it again to 47. And then they can raise it again to all the way to 50. At a certain point, once it gets to 50 points, people are going to say, wait a minute, there's no way Philadelphia and the Bears are scoring 50 points. And they start betting the other way. And the line starts to move until it finds its equilibrium maybe around 45. That is what makes volatility move. When it's too cheap, when the over-under is too low, it gets bought. And when it's too expensive, the over-under is too high, it gets sold. So thinking about it that way, the way what actually makes the movement happen? 
Well, let's talk about PCG, Pacific Gas and Electric. They're having themselves a rough, a rough couple of days at the time of this recording. It's 1030, you can see. It's uh, October 30th, day before Halloween. And it's gone from eight all the way down to three and a half, back up to six. And this red line, which represents volatility, has gone up and down. Well, what do you notice about this big movement? Well, take a look at these bars. You know what these bars are? Volume in options. So when options, you know, here's Monday, October 28th. So if I pull up time and sales, oh, that's pro scanner, not what I want. So if I pull up in time and sales, and I pull up a specific date, and I only want trades that are over, let's say, 250. All right, what are you gonna notice? Well, let's just put it this way. The green color is buying. This is an AMAT, I want PCG. Sorry about that. All right, there's my, my data. So what I want you to notice is, take a look. All of the green, Right, there's a little red, but look, green, 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 green. Uh, this number is probably a green. Uh, this is a, uh, some sort of green number, looks like a roll. So a lot of buying. So what happened to make this red number go up, this volatility go up, is there were a lot of buyers. People were buying the over. And then when we get here, when we get to the 29th or the 30th, where's my time and sales? You know, we just look at today. And what you'll notice is that it's a lot of selling, right? These, these eight puts were sold. The three puts were sold. These three puts were, I don't know, mid-market. You have a seller of the 10 puts. You know, some way out of the money calls, but that, those don't really mean anything. So all of this, here's another big put sale in January. So all of the flow today is selling. That is what drove volatility move. So volatility in a stock moves because people want to buy it or people want to sell it. You know what else does that? Stock prices. So in the end, Implied volatility goes up or down because there are buyers and sellers that don't match up. There are more buyers or more sellers. Stocks go up or down because there are more buyers or more sellers. The Vegas over under goes up because there are more buyers or there are more sellers. And it's a beautiful thing. All right, folks, I hope you have a great day. Make sure you subscribe, like, ask questions, share, and have a great day. Uh, thank you very much.